Hello, it's Tom with Digital Foundry. Five years in the making by indie developer Hello Games, No Man's Sky is a game of incredible scale from a relatively small team. Built on an in-house engine, the final product weighs in at a meager 5GB on your hard drive, a tiny amount compared to any typical AAA release. But this is far from ordinary, and with the game relying heavily on procedural generation, very little of what you see here uses pre-made textures or assets. Instead, the star of the show is the set of algorithms at its core, lines of code capable of generating terrain, plants, and even unique wildlife on the fly. Each detail is unique to countless millions of planets across a virtual galaxy, and No Man's Sky achieves this not through an inflated budget or a large pool of staff, but a smart use of technology. Visually, we're talking about a largely overlooked approach to graphics rendering that makes this level of variety possible. For No Man's Sky, we're talking about voxels. Rather than the polygons used in 99% of games made today, No Man's Sky's use of voxels makes this procedural generation and also destruction much easier. But it also comes with pros and cons. Fundamentally, the difference between a polygon and a voxel is simple. A polygon is made up of three points or more in a 3D space, and each of these points is called a vertex. A triangle is made of three vertexes, for example, and of course a square would be four. But in No Man's Sky's case, a voxel is a single point in a 3D space that's then given a value for size, color, or opacity. Think of it as a giant pixel in the scene. The advantage to this approach is the handling of voxels isn't always fixed to the graphics card, and CPUs can get involved in these calculations. As a result, we've seen older voxel-based games like Outcast on PC really put an emphasis on CPU power, though Housemarque's PS4 launch title Resogun proves it can be done all on the GPU. Voxels also take up less data compared to polygons, a single point rather than three that can easily be given a volume in a 3D space. Now, polygons are ideal for rendering in modern games, because it gives developers more options to animate their worlds, with more complex meshes for characters and terrain, made up of thousands or millions of triangles that can be programmed to move on their axis. No Man's Sky still mixes these traditional polygons into the scene for certain objects, the ship and space stations for example, but compared to most games the polygon count is kept low. Voxels are an essential building block in generating No Man's Sky's huge planets. Their simplicity makes it all the easier for the engine to procedurally generate miles of terrain, and crucially lets you manipulate it as you please. It's the same technology we've seen in Minecraft in fact, though in a much more advanced form. So, why doesn't every game use voxels like this? After all, we've seen it in several PS4 games already, starting with Resogun and also the upcoming Dreams from Media Molecule. Even the CryEngine features a voxel tool brush to create terrain. Well, the answer is to create compelling looking objects and scenery using voxels, something that looks more exciting than basic blocks, involves a lot of them to chisel in the finer details. To achieve this effect in No Man's Sky, you need voxels in high volume, something that demands a lot more processing power and RAM. It's a must for creating something of this scale, but that limit creates other side effects. One pitfall is that animations are limited compared to a typical polygon based game. See how in this case water stretches on into the distance here, but really it's the same asset copy pasted over and over, with no real movement. The same goes for geometry as a whole. There's a lot of deformable terrain in No Man's Sky, but little of it has properties for gravity. That's not an issue with the planet, but a limit we see across the game as a whole, always giving a sense that terrain simply has no weight. Textures are also generated on the fly too. The actual patterns laid across each object give a low res soup like look when you look down. And on PS4, it's backed by a low quality texture filtering pass that creates blur at high angles. Viewed from a distance though, the results speak for themselves. All of this is created using just an algorithm with a set of rules by Hello Games. Within certain bounds to keep the game playable, what we're seeing is always unique. A huge landscape that manages to run at 30 frames per second on PS4. And that's not to say there's no animation at all. Grass sways on flourishing jungle planets, for example. We have havoc physics for flags too. And creatures are given moving limbs. Whether they're bipedal or quadrupedal, the movement is worked out logically. A bit like the creature creator tool in EA Spore. 
They even have ragdoll physics when they fall to the floor, which is a nice touch. All of this helps to create a sense that each planet is alive. Sadly, terrain and most foliage is static and there's a visible amount of popping in the distance, especially while boosting around in a ship. It's a distraction, but the sheer variety is still impressive here. To mix up the formula, this algorithm factors in mountains, rivers, lakes, caves filled with stalactites, and even underwater caverns. Admittedly, there are plenty of dull planets out there, wastelands filled with absolutely nothing. But combined with atmospheric effects like rolling clouds, fog, dust, or rain, each planet brings a distinctive twist over the last. Elsewhere, other dynamics help add to that variety, notably in post-processing. You get visual tricks here like lens flare and bloom from spotlights, all rendered in post. Equally impressive is the manner in which shadows shift across the world, based on a planet's rotation and position to the sun, giving us a proper day-night cycle here. Sadly, nearby moons stay in a fixed position regardless of this cycle, a bit of a cheat really, but it's a rare example of a game simulating planetary bodies for its lighting while roaming on the ground. Some other post-process effects we're less keen on though. The resolution is set to a native 1080p on PS4, but the field of view is incredibly restrictive here. It limits your cone of vision to a narrow rectangle, and we really hope the PC version gives us a slider to widen that peripheral vision. That's not helped by a vignetting effect either, a basic filter that darkens the edges of the screen. Film grain is also used sparingly to give it a retro 60s sci-fi vibe, plus a chromatic aberration to the top of your visor. Again, these are both divisive effects that we wish we had toggles for. Perhaps one of our bigger gripes on PS4 though is that, despite running at 1080p, the anti-aliasing method here doesn't address all those jagged edges, especially in space stations where we're seeing a lot of distracting pixel crawl on sharp lines across the ground. It's an issue on patch 1.03, Though lead programmer Sean Murray has promised a more effective temporal AA solution is in the works, which might help smooth those rough points. Overall though, No Man's Sky has seen plenty of setbacks up to its release this week, and we hope there's plenty more to come in the way of updates. It's worth mentioning the game does have stability issues, and in making this analysis we've suffered from three crashes to the PS4's front end, mostly after starting a new game. From a quality assurance perspective, it's understandable that a game with such a freeform design will be hard to filter through for bugs, but it's clear there's still work to be done here. No Man's Sky is a rare breed of a game, an experiment in blurring the lines between indie and AAA title development while putting less used rendering technologies in the spotlight. The turnout is often fascinating, even if the stitching holding it together is plain to see. Overlooking the limits in its voxel-driven engine, Hello Games has crafted a sandbox with little competition in delivering this huge sense of scale. It almost brings out a childlike curiosity to see what's coming next, and if it does become a success, you can expect to see a lot of its technical choices imitated in future games. That's about a wrap for me though. Time will tell how much more No Man's Sky has to offer us in the long term, especially when it comes to online and multiplayer features. But if you enjoyed this in-depth analysis and would like to see more, don't forget to give us a like or subscribe below. In the meantime though, thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.